Well, hello everyone, welcome. It's Phil here with our special late edition. And the reason it's late, I'm not gonna lie, is because I completely forgot. <laughs> I was so busy doing some training, editing some videos, that I got a, 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 a panicky phone call. Finally, everyone was trying to get through to me in every way they could, and then in the end, someone phoned. That's how desperate it was. Someone actually phoned me and said, Phil, have you forgotten about Thursday Q&A? And I was like, <gasps> I have. So sorry people, we're half an hour late but we're here now, that's the important thing. It's Thursday live Q&A with me Phil here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. It's all about you guys, it's all about your questions on the Thursday Q&A. So questions about gear, music, techniques, playing out, promoting yourself, anything to do with your DJ. Remember Digital DJ Tips, our whole mission is to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. It's why we wrote the book, it's why we have digitaldjtips.com, the website, it's why we have the Facebook and YouTube channels that you could well be watching this on now, and of course why we have 23 and counting DJ courses with some really exciting ones on the way actually. So that's what we're all about, we're the school that helps you become better DJs and I want to help you right here, right now with anything that might be on your mind in your DJing. For the next half hour or so, that's what it's all about, we're going to talk DJing together. So let's do that, let's head over to the comment cam and uh, let's just uh, get this comment cam adjusted because I didn't have time to reset the normal one, so we're on the crappy, the crappy camera built into the Mac, so sorry about that today but hey, uh, I'm sure you'll live. Uh, all right then, so uh, so let's see what we've got. Let's uh, remember, just keep asking please. Matt says, are any questions welcome? Yes, they are welcome, absolutely anything. So you ask away, whatever it is that's on your mind and you're DJing, I'm here to help you. Uh, all right then, so hello to our people tuning in over on Mixcloud, it's always good to have you there. Uh, I can't put your comments on the screen, but it's, uh, it's nonetheless awesome that you're with us. Uh, I can put comments on the screen from Twitch and from our Facebook group and page and also from YouTube. So if you're watching on those channels, then uh, hello. Uh, and hello to Mixmaster Mall on, uh, on our Mixcloud page. All right then, uh, hi to Queso in Houston. Uh, hi to uh, DJ Blitz in Cape Town. I think there's a bit of a misspelling there. Uh, all right then. Uh, okay then, uh, so Keaton says, can you please dem demo using the manual loop to shorten loops from the front rather than the back. Well, it depends on what software you're using. Uh, I've got, the software I've got set up here is uh, Serato, uh, and in Serato it's really easy to do this, so I'm not sure how easy it is for me to demo it though uh, here without being able to show you both the software and the, uh, and the controller. So let's just have a look at this controller and see if there's an easy way of showing you this. Uh, and I'm not even sure where the manual looping is on this one. Oh, we've got manual looping down here. All right then. Uh, well, for the sake of it, let's just get something looping. I'm going to try and find a track that is uh, that is not copyrighted because if I've got a copyrighted track, then we're just going to get this stream taken down. So let's go try and find a track that is uh, copyright free. Uh, okay, so I've got a copyright free track here. So I'm not sure how this works. It's a while since I've used the manual looping on this. But hey, let's give it a go. So I'm going to guess that I can get my in point by pressing one of these. Manual looping. Right. Okay, so I'm just trying to work it out for you here. So there is a in and out point. That's the in and that's the out. I'm working out on the fly here, so you're just going to have to stick with me while I... Uh, move the in, move the out. That means flummoxed at the moment. No, I'm going to have to, because it's not a usual in and out point system here, I just can't remember exactly how it works. So on the fly, I can't show you how to do it, but it's annoying that I can't, to be honest. This is manual looping. You're going to, there's going to be some rolling users here watching this saying, Phil, just do whatever it might be. There's out, that's it out. Oh, okay, right, okay, we've got in and out sat here. Right, okay, on the screen then, sorry about that, it took a little while for me to get my head around it. On the screen then, you can see the loop there, okay? So, in order to adjust the in point, uh, we normally hold the in point and turn the jog wheel. So, hold the in point and turn the jog wheel, you see? So, if I switch back to me, I've got the in point held and I'm turning the jog wheel. Now, if I switch back to the deck, you can see what's happening is that in point is changing. If I move it forward, you should see the out point, you see? Now, if I want to adjust the out point, see the in point flashing under my finger? If I want to adjust the out point, I just hold the out one instead, 
And that'll start flashing, and then on the screen you'll see now I'm adjusting the out point of the loop. And we can do the classic kind of making a loop shorter thing. You can hear EDM DJ doing all the parts of this one. Yeah, that's how they do it. It's whole either the ear or the out point. And there you go, there's the in point being adjusted. So you might have waited three weeks for that, and it did take me three weeks to work out how to do it, but, uh, but there you go. That's how you adjust the in and out points. Now, it's gonna be the same in most software. You basically hold the point. It's the same in Pioneer CDJs. You hold the point and use the jog wheel to adjust it. All right then, so uh, I hope that helped you uh, eventually there, Keaton. Uh, all right then, so the next question is, um, Ricky says, hi Phil, do you know which of your Balcony Beats episodes were you using the Denon Prime controller in? It was one of the really early ones, probably number two, uh, I guess. Uh, so go and look on YouTube at Balcony Beats number two for that. Uh, all right then, so more of your questions. Matt, you guys talk a lot about controllers and CDJs, etc., even studio production. Can you spend some time looking into the process of DJing with Ableton and playing and improvising live? We would love to, Matt, but our audience, no one uses Ableton to DJ live, like no one. Uh, and so we just haven't got the resources to put into that as much fun as it is. It's just not something that there is any demand for at all. So um, that's why we don't do that. We'd love to. It's good fun. It's all, it's all good fun. Paul Van Dyke does a great Ableton live set. That said, Sasha went back from Ableton to using Dex because he just said it was all too complicated. There's different ways of looking at it. Uh, but the reason we don't do it is that there just isn't the audience for it among our among our people, unfortunately. Uh, all right then, so uh, Ali says, I wrote this question last week, but I didn't get a response. Can you elaborate on mixed cloud charts? Can you provide any feedback how it works? Hope you're well. So mixed cloud charts are divided up depending upon the genre that you tag your mixed cloud mix with. Uh, and then it's just the number of plays, I think, that, uh, that causes them to be made. I don't know about any ways of gaming it or any other algorithms behind them. I mean, if you put an obscure genre, on one of your mixed cloud mixes, it's going to be in that obscure genre chart, and you get. I think they email you and tell you about it, don't they? But no, unfortunately, I don't have any, uh, you know, any insider tips on how to make that better. Uh, all right then, uh, James says always better than late than never. Phil, yeah, I know. I can't believe I forgot about this. I look forward to this every week as well. I must have really been enjoying that editing. Um, all right then, what's the best platform for live streaming? Asks Joe. Well, Mixcloud Live is pretty good because it's legal. Uh, YouTube is the next best one because as long as you uh, are kind of lucky, you'll find most of your tracks will will remain uh, on your mix and your mix will stay there if you're mixing on YouTube. Uh, all right then, DJ says Phil was late, so I'm assuming that the house mixing course is going to be interesting. That's exactly what I was editing. I was editing a lesson on three ways to change BPM in the mix uh, and uh, it was I was just well into it. You know, it was a great mix. I'd got diff three different variations and before I knew it I had the panicked phone calls saying, Phil, you should be live. Uh, so yes, the house mixing course is coming. It's coming very soon. So if you're interested in learning how to mix house along, along the same lines that we taught um, our mixing power skills course and our mixing mastery course, which are two of our most popular courses, the kind of third installment is the uh, house mixing mastery. Uh, and if you go there, if you're not already a member of Digital DJ Tips, just sign up and we will let you know when that course is available. It's going to be in the next two or three weeks and there's going to be a nice offer for people on our list only. In fact, no one else is going to hear about it for months. So if you want to hear about it, that's what to do. Go down there. All right then. So hi to Black Eagle. Always good to have you here, my friend. Uh, so Graham says, I just bought a U22 audio interface. Can you go over how to connect up via an external mixer and Traktor S4 Mark III? So you're going to plug an... Uh, the output of the Traktor S4 Mark III into your U22 and the U22 into the back of your computer. You don't need to do any more than that. So if you've got any specific questions about that, ask them in the comments and we'll try and get back to you on that later on. I'll get one of my team to alert me to your comment. Uh, tell me what it is specifically you're, you're struggling to do because audio interfaces, you just plug an output from your from your DJ controller into the audio interface, maybe the booth output if you're using the master output for your speakers, and then you plug the audio interface into the computer and that's it. Uh, so there shouldn't be too much, uh, too much else to know about that. So really interesting from Litmus G over on Mixcloud, who says, I don't think Mixcloud charts is just plays. I'm on the uh, UK dubstep chart at number 14 with a grime mix, which has had only 15 views. 
I think it's also to do with how long each person listens for. I tend to listen to my own mixes uh, to avoid skewing the views on my YouTube channel. Right, okay. So uh, may, it might be the number of minutes that your mix has been listened to. So thank you for that litmus G over there on uh, Mixcloud. Interesting. It makes sense really, doesn't it? Uh, all right then. Hi Phil, have you heard about Denon releasing any features similar to Stems from Virtual DJ and also from algorithm, right? So Stems is the new function where in real time you can drop in and out the vocals and the instrumentals and the drums and so on. I haven't, not heard anything about that. Um, I had some time with Denon gear and it was great, says John. Well, there's a Denon fan there as well. Uh, all right then. Uh, the Denon DL, VL12 turntables for time code. Yeah, they're fine. VL12 is a good turntables. Uh, all right then. Uh, so um, waving back to you, Dom. Dom's in Brighton. Uh, so uh, William says, I love Phil's tips. Where can I get the book? Right, you can buy it on Amazon. You can get it in any good book, book, book store. You can just order it in a bookstore. You can also get the Kindle version. You can also get it on uh, I, you know, uh, Apple Books, but also you can get the Audible version. So if you want to just listen to the audio book, that's there as well. With me reading it, what more could you want? Uh, but if you want the book without having to pay a penny and you're happy with the PDF, again, just go here. I never get that right, do I? Uh, because we will give you a free copy just for joining Digital DJ Tips. We'll give you a PDF download of the book. So thank you very much uh, for asking that question. Uh, really big questions here. What do you think about the future of digital DJing? It's too big for a, uh, too big for a, uh, a late Q&A on a Thursday. I think the future's bright, frankly. So uh, there we go. All right then, Nick says, when analyzing some tracks in Rekordbox, the beat grid is way off. Either the tempo is wrong or the beats are in the wrong place. Any tips to try and get it right? Well, normally the beat grid will be uh, slightly too far forward or back, but the beat should be all right. Um, but there's nothing really you can do other than in your software. Let me show you on um, Serato because it's very, very similar on all software. So in your software, when you're analyzing your tracks, uh, so I'm going to just turn on the... Uh, Serato play function here. I can't see it now. How weird. It's got away. Right, what I'll do is unplug the controller. Now if I unplug the controller from Serato, that means that I can make sure I unplug the controller, not the internet, or else we'll be uh, losing the whole broadcast. Uh, it should now flip back to our offline mode, which it hasn't done yet. How strange, it's really not playing ball with me today, Serato, at all. I don't want that, I want offline mode, please, people. It's just, uh... no, I cannot get it to do what I want. I was trying to get to the analyze button in Serato. Let me, in fact, you're asking about Rekordbox. So let's get Rekordbox launched and I'll show you straight in Rekordbox. All right then, so one of the things you can do when you're analyzing tracks on your DJ gear is tell it the BPM range you want it to analyze the tracks between. So let's say you've got lots of down tempo music, or you've got lots of house music, or you've got lots of drum and bass. There's three big different BPM ranges, aren't they? And so when you're telling your software, right, I want you to analyze these tracks, you can make it easier for the software by saying, look, this is the, the rough BPM range that you're likely to find these tracks in. And so, you know, if the tracks are outside, have another look. It might be that you've got the BPM a little bit wrong. So uh, in Rekordbox, you do it like this. And I'm going to head over to Rekordbox now and show you. Again, I'm just trying to get to the right part of Rekordbox so that it's easy to do so. The computer's running terribly, terribly slowly. That's the problem I have here. And I actually cannot get it to... Uh, I cannot get it to boot Rekordbox at all. It's not my day at the moment, is it, folks? Uh, no, it's just not doing it. It's just not liking it. I think it got snarled up editing. So anyway, what I was saying is the easy way to do it is when you go to analyze your tunes, uh, there's, there's normally options with analyze and you can select a BPM range. So it might be, you know, 80 to 120 or 90 to 140 or 120 to 160. Select the BPM range, which is closest to the music that you're analyzing and it'll give you a more accurate result. So sorry, I couldn't show you that, but uh, such is live broadcasting, eh? Um, so, um, uh, okay, hey Phil, what jog wheel would you recommend as an add-on to the Tractor S8? Is it even possible? Yeah, it is possible. You can use, basically you could use um, DVS, 
So you could use turntables with DVS. You could use any, like any, basically if you're gonna use DVS, any CDJ will do. You could get Pioneer CDJ 700s. Uh, the Newmark makes some really cool little CDJ players for like two or $300. I can't remember the name of them. I think they're called the NDX. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. They're awesome. They've got great jog wheels. A couple of those DVS'd in. You could also MIDI map them in, but it's getting complicated, yeah. But it is possible to do that. Um, so so um, any of those would, should do the job for you. Uh, all right then, um, so uh, a lot of you are calling me out for not being able to operate that uh, controller. Hey guys, you know, it's the first time I've tried to do manual looping on that controller in about six months. Give me a break. I got there in the end. Uh, anyway, um, all right then, so next, uh, yeah, thank you Doms for defending me there. Look, I do this live and it sometimes goes wrong and I sometimes forget, uh, you know, jog on if it's not good enough for you. Anyway, all right then. Um, so this is an awesome piece of equipment. I, hi Phil, I've just pre-ordered the Time Tosser. Have you seen it and what are your thoughts? This is an awesome little box for doing live slicing. Uh, it looks cool. We haven't had a chance to play with one yet, but yeah, I think you're gonna have an awful lot of fun with that. Uh, all right then, uh, Bruno says, uh, do you have any plans to do a DJ Essentials or Advanced course for Virtual DJ 2021? Um, yeah, the, the course we've got is getting a bit old now. We are planning to update the Virtual DJ course. So uh, that is on our, on our playlist, uh, on our you know, making list. Okay, um, so Truth Knight, how soon should I start streaming? I'm still relatively new to DJing. Should I start now and use it as part of my practice? Yes, you should, because if you've got a gig in the diary, even if it's only a live streaming gig, then guess what? You're gonna prepare for it, you're gonna work hard for it, you're gonna do it. And even if it's only your mum tuning in, you've just done a gig online. I think you should start live streaming immediately. And if you're not really very um, confident, then just do it on Mixcloud and don't tell anyone. No one will watch. Um, you might find one or two people joining in on Mixcloud, uh, but you know your audience will be in the tens. Uh, but yeah, definitely start live streaming immediately. Talking of Mixcloud, Daily over on Mixcloud says, hey Phil, I've just purchased the Evermix Box 4 and it ca only came with the iOS DIN cable. This is the Evermix Box 4. It's a little DJ interface that lets you get your music into the computer. And what, uh, what uh, is being said here by uh, uh, Daily on Mixcloud is that it only came with a iOS cable like this. It's got a DIN plug on one end which plugs into the mix box device and the other end has got an iOS cable uh, and should it come with a USB-C cable as well I was intending to use it and record it and stream from my Mac it should come with a USB-C cable and maybe they've stopped sending them out with USB-C cables but mine came with a USB-C cable and I'm pretty sure it should have come with one double check your packaging uh, and if not get in touch with them, I'm sure they'll send you one out. Uh, yes, it should have come with the USB-C, and the good news is, yes, it does work on the Mac. You can plug it into a Mac, not into a Windows PC for some reason, and you can use it as an audio interface for that. So I'm not sure why you didn't get that cable daily, uh, but uh, get in touch with them. They're good people over at, Mix, uh, at um, Evermix. They will, they'll sort you out. Stephen says, uh, I'm considering the iRig Stream to enable me to record my sets. We've got one of those here somewhere as well. Where's the iRig Stream gone? Maybe someone's pinched it to record their DJ sets. Oh no, there it is. There's the iRig stream. You can hardly see it in this, on this crappy camera, but there's a little audio interface, uh, which is similar to the uh, Mixcloud one, uh, Mixcloud, to the uh, Mixbox one. Um, I'm considering the iRig stream to enable to me to record uh, when you tracks from my Tidal account. In Serato, it won't let me. Uh, would it enable me to do this? Uh, yes, it'll enable you to do it. Uh, also, you can get some software for your computer that will enable you to record Serato as well. It's a piece of software that I use called Loopback, uh, which will, uh, it's by a company called Rogue Amoeba, and it's called Loopback. There's also a piece of software called Black Hole, and there's a piece of software called VB Wire, VB Wire. All of those will let you record on your computer without needing an audio interface at all. So you can record your sets even though you're using streaming using those uh, functions. Uh, all right then, um, so uh, I'm just looking for questions which are not uh, repeats because people are repeating their questions hoping I'm going to answer it. it just makes it harder for me to do my job, people. I do try and answer as many as I can, and the team will answer them all, even if I can't. Um, so have you used the microphone inputs on the Denon Prime Go? No, I haven't, um, but I don't see why there'd be anything other than all right. Have you had any problems with them, Ernest? Let us know. 
Um, all right then, um, the next question, how do we redrum old 60s and 70s Motown music? Uh, okay, so you're gonna need to uh, beat grid it properly. If you're in Serato, you can just put a beat grid on every fourth beat, put a beat on every fourth beat. Even better, get it into Ableton and warp it, which will just give you a steady beat throughout, and then just drop a beat underneath it. You could drop a loop underneath it uh, from a sample pack. Really easy to do, and uh, it's really good if you want to just beef up those old tracks to mix in a DJ set, so that's cool. Um, all right then, uh, so um, uh, Facebook user, someone on our Facebook uh, Global DJ Network says, I'm looking to buy a mixer. Does a discontinued mixer mean it has less features than an active mixer? Um, not really. Depends what you want it for. You know, mixers over the years have had stuff added to them, like normally audio interfaces. But look, we've got mixers here we still use that are 25 years old. Just make sure it's got the features you want. You know, unlike DJ software, which is always changing, mixers are pretty standard. If you want MIDI, make sure it's got MIDI. If you want onboard effects, make sure it's got onboard effects. You know, get a features list of what you want and then make sure your mixer will do it. Um, that's the best way of mixes, but no, older mixes are, are fine. Uh, would you still recommend the Traktor Z2 or Z2? There's another mixer question. Yes, it's a great mixer, uh, and I would still recommend it. Uh, all right then, Jamie says, thank you for all you're doing for DJ culture, Phil. Even with 23 years of experience, we sometimes need to be reminded of the small stuff that matters. Too right? Uh, I agree, I need to be reminded, obviously, from that demo earlier. Uh, no, all right then. Uh, Paul says, hi Phil, I just ordered your book today from Amazon. I'm looking forward to reading it. Good, I'm glad. Uh, please let me know how you do with it. Uh, what are the best studio monitors for under 250 pounds? Off the top of my head, uh, not sure because of that price point, but people can help Colin out. Colin's over on Facebook, maybe help Colin out underneath in the uh, comments or just type it anywhere and I'll try and read them out before the end of today. All right then, um, so the next question is from um, Rob, who says, what do you think of your thoughts on the new Play DJ TV, brand new streaming platform, um, in beta, but so far impressive, copyright's not an issue, is it subscription funded? So it's basically like Mixcloud, right? Do they save your mixes? Do they record your mixes and do they stay on there, Rob? Let me know. It wasn't working when I last look, looked, um, when I last had a look, and they said, you know, come over here and have a look, and there was nothing on it, so I haven't looked since. Um, uh, Koreshin says, what do you think about upgrading from a DDJ 400 to a DDJ 1000? Yeah, great idea, it's a great upgrade. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, certainly, you know, it's not worth upgrading from a small controller to, a, to a, another small controller or something. If you're gonna upgrade, make a big leap, and that is definitely a big leap. Um, so, um, Marlo says, a live streaming question. Is it possible to control the sound volume for listeners, or is there a max volume imposed by the streaming site? There is a max volume and they'll just limit it if you over push it. Uh, but basically just send as loud a signal as you can without it distorting, then you've done your bit. Uh, okay then, so uh, Martin, I'll see you later. Good to have you here. Uh, so DJ Pepper says, hey Phil, does Digital DJ Tips have any courses or videos on production for pre-mixing and mashups in order to play them live, like DJs from Mars? So we have our production course and we also have some mashup training which is in our How to Make DJ Edits course. But as far as a course that helps you make kind of like halfway between a DJ edit and a full mashup, not yet, but we're working with Laidback Luke. Luke, finally, after all the lockdown stuff, we've finally got the dates in to work with Laidback Luke on a course which is addressing that exact thing. How to make bootlegs, mashups, re-edits, and all that lot. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Uh, all right then, uh, DJ Mike says, I never see you whip out any of the tractor controllers to do those demos. Have you got none in the lab? No, it's just that my preferred personal software is Serato, so when I'm doing stuff, I've got Serato set up. Uh, Steve is your man for tractor. Steve has always, always got a tractor controller whipped out uh, over in his studio, so, uh, so that's why he's got most of the tractor stuff there as well. Uh, all right then, so please don't repeat questions, people. I just have to scroll past them and it just delete, de you know, delays me. Uh, all right then, so... Um, uh, any chance of Denon Prime 4 to have FX quality updates? I don't think so. I don't think they're planning to do any changes to the effects on Denon Prime 4. I mean, they can upgrade the firmware on these things. So, but I have not, not heard of anything about that. So, all right then. Um, so I like the look of the Hercules Impulse 500 on the new Mark Platinum FX. They're both great controllers. I've been DJing on the 500 a lot recently on my live streams, and we've been using the FX a lot here for our training. And they're both really, really good. Uh, all right then, so, I mean, they're really, for the money, they're both amazing controllers. I can't really underline that enough. 
It's amazing how controllers have come on. Um, uh, I'm loving the Mixing Mastery course, says Pam. Oh, thank you for that. So that's our mixing course that came. It was the course before the one we're making now, which is called House Mixing Mastery. Stephen, you're very welcome. Uh, so uh, Steve says, when's Pioneer going to get their arse in gear and release a new CDJ? It can't be too long now, can it, people? It just cannot be too long. Uh, but we don't know anything about it. Uh, all right, then. Um, <laughs> Sideshow Mall says, uh, and as I said it, I saw his comment. Uh, my girlfriend wants to know how many times you said all right then in the stream. That's obviously my tick uh, to say that. Uh, but thank you for pointing it out. Hi, Phil. Do you believe that controllers like the Hercules 3500 are good enough to play at venues or at any live performances? Yes, they are. I mean, I'd say live performances rather than venues. Venues really do require professional gear. And I would say you're kind of going to use their gear or have a really good reason to turn up with your own. And turning up with your own gear, if it's a hobby controller, is probably not the best look, but it depends on the venue, right? You wouldn't turn up at Ministry of Sound with a Hercules Impulse 300, but you might turn up at your local pub. Uh, so it just depends on the venue, I'd say. And that doesn't mean that the, the gear is in any way not capable of doing the job. It's just that pro controllers have got better build, better sound quality, are less likely to let you down that one time in a thousand and so on. Uh, all right then, so uh, the next question is, are lots of you helping out on the speakers? Thank you. Focus Alpha 65 is a good, says Mark. So there's a speaker uh, question for you. Uh, any chance that Pioneer enables drum machine beat sync on their controllers? I think they've got Ableton Link on Rekordbox. I'm pretty sure it's on Rekordbox off the top of my head, which will let you link to uh, other stuff, possibly drum machines. Uh, yeah, try looking at Ableton Link as a way of linking that together. Certainly that's, that is a way of linking over MIDI. Uh, all right then, um, the next question is, let's just do two or three more, because I do have to shoot off, unfortunately. I've got teaching to, uh, teaching to come. Apparently I look like Walter White in uh, Breaking Bad, which I'll take as a compliment. I like the bad guys. Uh, all right then, so um, uh, yeah, one or two more questions because I've got to go, got some teaching to do. Uh, so um, I've been looking at the XDJXZ and there seem to be options around cheaper CDJ and mixer setups, which are similar in cost. What are your thoughts? I'd go for the all-in-one unit just because it's easier and less messy, less messy to set up. And also it's got the full size jog wheels. And yes, you can get smaller mixer and two CDJs, but they're not the same size jog wheels. They don't feel the same. Uh, so I'd go for the XDJ XZ. It's a good, good price for what you get that controller or that DJ system, because of course you don't need a computer, which is a definition of a controller. It's something that controls a computer. So DJ system. All right then, uh, I've just ordered some Pioneer DM40 speakers to go with my DDJ800. They're a good uh, set of speakers. And I know it comes with an RCA to AUX or some sort of cable, but could I connect my speakers, uh, my control to speaker directly using RCA male twin? Uh, okay, I don't know what the sockets are on the back of the uh, DM40s, but there's probably an RCA in on one of the speakers and the other one's a slave speaker from memory. I don't think they're two separate monitors, in which case any normal cable should do you. Um, so you should be all right there. Uh, and finally, uh, more speaker recommendations. Rocket KRK6, I think they might go a bit over the 250 pound uh, limit that was set by our viewer there. But um, but anyway, thank you for that. Look, I've got to go now, folks. And thank you very, very much for tuning in. It's always good to do this stuff live. I was a bit rushed today due to completely forgetting about it. Hands up, my mistake. But uh, thank you for those of you who hung around for it anyway. And I'll see you again next time. We're here on Tuesday next when we are talking uh, second half of our uh, music streaming services. It was so popular this last Tuesday, just gone. We're going to talk, we're going to look through the music streaming services and the integrations in DJ software. And then on Thursday, it's another one of these. I'll be on time, I promise. And then next Saturday, there's just a chance that at a weird time, a few hours earlier than normal, you're going to see Steve and myself doing a live stream from the top of the highest mountain in Andalusia. Watch this space. And then if I get down that mountain, all right, I should be doing our live stream uh, a week on Sunday uh, as well, next week. No live stream this week. Uh, all right then, so uh, that's it from us. Get good, get out there, make the moments, and I will see you guys again very soon. Thank